a third-party mobile and online payment platform. Alipay can be used for a variety of things, shopping, transportation, bill payments, booking doctor's appointments, transferring money loans, and many more. In China alone, Alipay has a total of 520 million daily active users. Alipay has a global presence in more than 110 countries, such as the United States, Brazil, Russia, and many more. In August this year, Alipay launched in Singapore. Alipay faces strong competition in the digital payments arena. In Singapore, its main competitor is cash because cash is the most prevalent mode of payment. Other competitors include credit and debit cards, Apple Pay, Android Pay, and DBS Payla. Alipay's main strengths lie in its convenience and multifunctions. It is both cashless and cardless by nature and has the potential to disrupt current practices. Transactions to peers as well as merchants can also be made without being tied to a particular bank. Their weaknesses include stigma towards made-in-China products and a heavily cluttered mobile payment market. And as per all mobile payment applications, there are general security concerns from consumers. Alipay is no exception. Through our research, we found the key business problem, the little incentive for consumers to go digital. Consumers do not see a need for mobile payment and are also concerned about the security. This leads to a low demand for mobile payment apps. However, one opportunity identified that can increase demand is Singapore's move towards a cashless society. Singapore's digital savviness makes it easy for adoption of new technology. Now, let's move on to our marketing objectives for Alipay in Singapore. Our first marketing objective will be to generate $1 million in revenue by the end of the first year. The second objective is to acquire at least 20,000 users by the end of one year, based on a compounded increase of users. Meet Tim. Tim is a banker aged 26 years old. He lives a hectic and busy lifestyle and is always looking for new ways to make his life a little easier and make things more convenient. He keeps up with the latest trends and is digitally savvy. Alipay will be targeting young working adults between 21 to 29 years old, like Tim. We conducted interviews to better understand our consumers. Here are some key insights that we picked up. Firstly, on current mobile payment apps. PayNow is better than PayLa as it comes directly from user's bank account. PayLa utilizes an e-wallet that requires transferring funds in and out of a DBS account. On the other hand, PayNow is linked to all seven banks in Singapore, making it possible to transfer money across all accounts. Convenience and ease of use are the key benefits here. Secondly, on concerns. The top concern for mobile payment apps is security. As it is money-related, respondents are concerned that other people can use their phones to make purchases if they lose their phone. Thirdly, reuse intention of current available cashless apps. Respondents who have downloaded cashless mobile apps have low reuse intention and did not develop long-term habitual usage. Many of them only downloaded the app due to exclusive promotions that the mobile app can offer upon download. Now, we have a better understanding of what our target audience think about mobile payment apps. We will be using the IDA model which is sectioned into four stages Awareness, Interest, Desire and Action. We aim to have awareness amongst 80% of our target audience, amounting to 390,936. We aim to spark interest among 70%, instill desire into 50% of those interested and an overall 15% adoption rate of those who have desire. Our qualitative research found that despite Alipay ranking high in terms of comprehensiveness, there is still a perception that it lacks in security as compared to cash. As such, the campaign aims to create a horizontal push such that Alipay enters the empty quadrant of high security and comprehensiveness. Our communication objectives are, firstly, to encourage app downloads, and secondly, to communicate that Alipay is a secure form of payment. Now, on to our proposed media plan. With a media mix of print, digital, outdoor and broadcast, we used a pulsing strategy due to two reasons. Firstly, its continuous presence, and secondly, the periodic increases it gives. A continuous presence provides a flaw of media support and will help a new service like Alipay to have a constant media presence. The periodic increases in media messaging will coincide with festive periods such as the Great Singapore Sale, Christmas and the Lunar New Year. 
and is hoped to help drive downloads and usage of Alipay app. Going back to the IDA model, here is a breakdown of our media plan for Alipay Singapore. In the awareness stage, we aim for 80% of our target audience to be aware of Alipay. Newspaper, radio and YouTube will be utilised. For this stage, our team will focus more on traditional mass media with higher reach to effectively achieve our aims. Alipay's advertising will be seen on The Straits Times, Class 95 and Kiss 92 FM during the evening drive time. In the interest stage of our strategy, we will be using more targeted forms of advertising to garner interest in Alipay. We will be using 8 Days Magazine to target the younger segment of our target audience as well as buying Facebook and YouTube streaming ads based on our target audience's interest and digital activity. With these curated mediums, we believe that interest will be sparked amongst a significant portion of our target audience. Additionally, we will be using TV commercials on Channel 5, cinema ads as well as out of home to generate interest through captivating visuals. TVCs and cinema ads will be placed before shows that our target audience will have a higher likelihood of watching, whereas OOH will be placed in locations with higher demographic of our target audience. This way, we can ensure that our advertising remains targeted. In the desire stage, our primary media vehicles will be geared towards attracting our potential consumers with the compelling benefits of Alipay, allowing us to stand out amongst our competitors. Tapping onto the top-of-mind awareness that has been developed in the last two stages, we will be extending our TV commercials from the previous stage to this stage. For support, search engine marketing as well as social media influencers will also be used. In the final stage of our media plan, we intend to induce action from our target audience. With the use of email direct marketing and Facebook ads, we can apply customer segmentation and personalization techniques that will effectively acquire increased downloads and usage of the app. Outdoor advertising will be bought in places with purchase intent, such as shopping malls. Radio spots will also be purchased on Kiss 92 FM to be played at malls. As radio is also a good medium to remind consumers of our product at this last stage of the campaign, we will also be purchasing spots on Spotify as well. To evaluate the effectiveness of our marketing communication efforts, we will measure the number of downloads and conduct post-tests on consumer perception. This will aid us in knowing to what extent were our objectives met. With the four stages of our media plan and a clear communication objective, we believe that our media strategy will deliver the marketing objectives that were set out at the start, which is to generate $1 million in revenue as well as acquire at least 20,000 users by the end of one year.